welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at the systematic organic chemistry that you need to know to be able to carry out Unit 2 of Higher Chemistry. This video will cover topics from National 5 and from Unit 1 of Higher. The first concept that you need to be familiar with is that of saturated and unsaturated compounds. Saturated compounds, such as the two shown here, always have single carbon to carbon bonds. Unsaturated compounds will have at least one double carbon to carbon bond within their structure. Looking more closely at unsaturated compounds, they can undergo addition reactions with different small molecules. The first addition reaction we'll look at is that of hydrogen. So if you take an alkene and you add hydrogen, you'll get the corresponding alkene. If we take our alkene, we can add on a hydrogen halide, where X represents either fluorine, chlorine, bromine or iodine. If you have an asymmetrical alkene, you need to be aware that you'll get a mixture of products where the X could be on different carbons. Another reaction we can carry out is by adding water. This allows us to produce alcohols. In the same way as adding HX, if you have an asymmetrical alkene, you can produce two different products. One of the most important addition reactions for an alkene is that of adding bromine. Bromine is a diatomic molecule, and when you have two bromine atoms joined together, they have a brown colour. When you then add this onto an alkene, the bromine-bromine bond breaks and it becomes colourless. This decolorizing of bromine is the test for unsaturation. The more bromine required, the more double bonds there must be within the molecule. Pause the video now and draw the addition products for these two reactions. For the first reaction, we're adding on Cl2. This is much like adding on bromine. The double bond will break and we will add the Cl2 across the double bond. For our next reaction, we're going to get two different products because we have an asymmetrical alkene here. We get one product where the H will add on to this carbon and the OH will add on to the middle carbon. We get a second product where the OH will add on to the end carbon. H will then add on to the middle carbon. And here you can see we have two different products. For all of the organic families that you've looked at so far, you should be able to know their molecular formula, use that to be able to draw the full structural formula and the shortened structural formula. So the molecular formula for pentane is C5H12. We're going to draw the full structural formula for pentane. So this is where all bonds are shown.
between all of the carbons and all of the hydrogens. For the short and structural formula, we're going to take each section in turn and we're going to take out the bonds. So here we have a section that is CH3, this section is CH2, another CH2, another CH2, and then finally a CH3. So this is your full structural formula, and this is shortened. We're going to do the same now, but for a different family. So we have cyclobutane, which is C4H8. The cyclo part means that it's in a ring. So here is our full structural formula. So showing all of the bonds. And now for a short and structural formula, we're going to take each corner in turn. So we have CH2, 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 and CH2. We can also do this for alkenes. So butyrene is also C4H8, but as an isomer of cyclobutane has a different structure. So we'll start with our four carbons and between carbon two and three we have a double bond and then we can go around and fill in the hydrogen so that each carbon has four bonds. And now we're going to look at each section in turn to allow us to write out the shortened structural formula. So we have CH3 on this part here, then CH, another CH, followed by CH3. You should be able to do this for branched molecules as well. So 2-methylcyclopropane has 4 carbons and 10 hydrogens. So to draw out your 2-methylcyclopropane, you're going to start from the end of the name. So propane has a backbone of three carbons, and then on the second carbon, we have a methyl group. So looking to draw this into our short and structural formula, there are two ways we can do this. So here we have CH3, then CH with a branch of CH3 which you can put into brackets, and then our final CH3. Or you can shorten down this section here, and then show the branch here. And then lastly we have a branched alkene. So but 3-methylbutonine has a formula of C5H10. So we'll start with the butonine. We have four carbons in a row, double bonds between one and two, and then on three we have a methyl branch. So just fill in so that every carbon has four bonds, being careful of the ones with the double bonds. Now for a short and structural formula, we have CH2, CH, CH with a branch, and then CH3. We can also represent that as CH2, CH, CH, CH3, and then put our branch on here. Pause the video now and draw the full and short and structural formula for each of these molecules. So for 2,4-dimethylhexane, 
We need to start with the hexane part and we're drawing six carbons in a row. On numbers two and four, we have methyl groups. Now we're going to shorten this structural formula. So here we have a CH3 followed by a CH with a CH3 branch, CH2 here, another CH with a CH3 branch, CH2 and then a CH3. So for pentuene, we're going to draw five carbons. Between numbers two and three, we have our double bond. And then we can fill in the hydrogens. Now to shorten, we have CH3, CH, CH, CH2, and CH3. Isomers are molecules which have the same molecular formula but different structural formula. You should be able to draw isomers, you should be able to name isomers, and you should be able to look at them from their molecular formula and be able to draw out different isomers. They can be of the same or different homologous series, so you can have isomers of cycloalkanes and alkenes, and they often have different physical properties, which is things like melting point and boiling point. So here we have isomers of C4H10, so these are both alkanes. Here are some isomers of C4H8, so they are a mixture of alkenes and cycloalkenes. Pause the video now and draw all the isomers for pentane and C3H6. The easiest way to start is to draw the straight chain isomer. That's going to be the one with five carbons in a row. You can then start taking branches off of this. So if we take this CH3 at the end off as a branch, we can bring it into the second carbon. And then finally we can take a second branch, so if we take the end carbon off and also put it on this carbon here. And then you end up with a cross structure. Drawing the isomers for C3H6. If you start by drawing one that's in a straight line, it will be an alkene. There are no branched isomers of this alkene. The other isomer is cyclopropane. You should be able to make predictions about solubility, boiling point or volatility and you should base these predictions on the presence of oxygen, hydrogen or nitrogen, hydrogen bonds which indicate hydrogen bonding being present within the molecule. The arrangement of any polar bonds, so if they're asymmetrical that will lead to permanent dipole, permanent dipole interactions. The molecular size which gives you an indication of the strength of London dispersion forces and also the polarity of solute and solvent using the light dissolves light rule. Solubility, boiling point and volatility should all be explained in terms of the type and strength of intermolecular forces present. You looked at this during Unit 1, but it's also important during Unit 2. Pause the video now and try and answer these questions. So why does ethanol have a higher boiling point than propane? So if we draw out the structures for these two molecules.
here is ethanol. And here is propane. Based on their gram formula mass, these have comparable molecular size. However, the boiling point of ethanol is significantly higher than that of propane, and that is because of the OH group here. This leads to hydrogen bonding between ethanol molecules, whereas propane doesn't have this, so it only has London dispersion forces. Hydrogen bonding is stronger and therefore requires more energy to boil ethanol. So why is trichloromethane more soluble in water than tetrachloromethane? So trichloromethane is based on a methane molecule. It has one hydrogen and three chlorines. Tetrachloromethane has a very similar structure, but that one hydrogen has been replaced with a chlorine. Although we have the same polar bonds in both molecules, leading to the dipoles shown, this molecule is symmetrical, whereas this one is not. Because this molecule is not symmetrical, we have a permanent dipole in this direction, which means that this has permanent dipole, permanent dipole interactions. Because we have a dipole, it means that this is polar and therefore can interact with water using the like dissolves like rule, whereas this molecule is nonpolar and will therefore, therefore be soluble in nonpolar solvents. Finally, we are to predict which of these molecules we think will be more volatile. So we're looking for strength of intermolecular forces here. So within this molecule, we have an OH, which means that we would have hydrogen bonding. There's no OH in this one here. We have this part here, which would be polar, but hydrogen bonding is stronger. So we'd expect this molecule to be more volatile. Thank you for watching my video. I hope that you found it helpful. Please remember to subscribe and follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Miss Adams Chem for regular updates on new videos. Bye for now.